Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We are here to talk about another chicken breed today because chickens are awesome and I love the variety. So today we are going to talk about the Dutch Bantam. This little dude is a true Bantam with no larger counterpart. It was developed in the 1880s in Holland or thereabouts. Local legend says that the local peasants had to give larger eggs to landowners so they started raising these smaller birds in order to keep the eggs because the eggs that the Dutch Bantam lays are quite small. So that's local legend. And I like it. It's cute. I think that's a really fun way for a breed to get started. This is one of the smallest Bantams that you are going to find. They are a rarer breed, so you're not going to find them everywhere. But when you do find them, they're completely adorable. They were popular and they continue to be popular sort of in the UK but they weren't imported in the into the UK until around the 1970s. The US had them in the 1940s but then they actually died out in the US around the 1950s. They were re-imported in the 1970s and they did become popular. These days they are popular in Europe and the Americas, but it's difficult to find a really good breeder because sometimes they're outcrossed to other breeds, making them slightly larger. A true purebred Dutch Bantam is not always that easy to find. If you do get your hands on them, you'll notice how cute and adorable they are, mostly because of their teeny size and their great conformation. They're really beautiful birds. They are an exhibition or an ornamental breed these days. Um, they're too small to raise for meat. They don't lay a ton of eggs and their eggs are pretty small. So when you raise these guys, it's because you like how they look, because they're cute or because you want to show them. So they're relatively easy keepers. Uh, they don't eat a lot because of their small size. They are not overly aggressive. They're not too flighty. But they can't free range because they can fly and they sometimes don't come back. So this is not the best free range bird. But if you have a decent sized coop, I mean they're a small bird, they don't need a ton of space. So if you have a decent sized coop, you can just keep them locked up the entire time. They do not need to free range because they're fairly small. They don't need a ton of space. And free ranging them does tend to lead to birds that completely disappear. So they lay about 80 to 160 tinted eggs per year per hen. I know that seems like a really big range, but some hens are just better layers than others. Most of the hens I've encountered lay about 100, 110 a year, but you might get a hen that lays as little as 80, and some of the best performing hens of the Dutch Bantams do lay up to 160. So yeah, big range, but that's the way it is with smaller birds a lot of the time. So some of the colors that you can get Dutch Bantams in include gold partridge, silver partridge, a yellow partridge, a blue silver partridge, a blue yellow partridge, a blue partridge, a cuckoo partridge, a red shouldered white pile, the cuckoo, black, white, blue, and lavender. Now those are just some of the colors. Those are most of the accepted colors, but some of these colors will not be accepted by your particular association because every association governing the showing of chickens has a slightly different accepted color for this breed. So those are some of the colors you'll encounter. Not all of those colors will be showable in your association. So double check if you want to show your Dutch Bantams, double check before you buy your new Dutch Bantams, that that color is showable in the association you will be showing in because it does vary a little bit from association to association. These are a hardy bird. They are sometimes broody. They do go broody, not like silkies or anything like that, but they do go broody a lot of the time. However, they can't cover many eggs. They're really tiny, so they can't cover a full dozen eggs usually. Because they can't cover very many eggs, they do tend to do better if you just take the eggs and hatch them in an incubator because you won't get very many eggs hatched at a time with your broody hens. So if you snatch the eggs before the birds go broody and just let the birds lay the eggs and then hatch them in an incubator, you'll probably do better simply because they don't lay a lot of eggs anyway. If they're broody half the year, it's not going to help you. They can't cover a ton of eggs. They do tend to be decent mothers if you do let them hatch the eggs, but 
Again, they can't cover very many. They're so small. Okay, they're so small. They just can't cover that many eggs, even though their eggs are pretty small. So my recommendation for this breed, if you're going to breed them, take the eggs, hatch them in an incubator, or take the eggs and give them to a silky or another really broody breed to hatch that's slightly bigger, just because you'll get more eggs to hatch because the bird can cover more. So these guys are friendly and good-tempered, so they're not difficult for a new chicken keeper. In fact, I do recommend them for new chicken keepers, mostly because they don't mind being confined. So if you're not comfortable free-ranging, this is a perfect breed. They don't need to free-range. So they're good for a new chicken keeper because they tend to be friendly, pretty even-tempered. They are not great with kids, only because they're so small and kids sometimes squeeze them. <laughs> it's not the chicken's fault. It's little kids tend to squeeze and these birds don't really take a good squeeze very well just because they're little and they're delicate. So I wouldn't recommend small children handle them, but... They are a good family bird, as long as you don't allow small children to pick them up and squeeze them. <laughs> so, other than that, they are a really friendly, easy-to-have bird. They're a lot of fun. That's about it for us here today at Anderson Acres. We'll see you tomorrow.